Right, we've just finished um, the Olympic Games that was held in, in Britain this summer. The women's British football team progressed to the quarterfinals of a very well you know, received tournament. Yeah. It seemed a great advert for ladies football, Martin. Um, but what would you say needs to be done um, for the game to continue in, in the media spotlight? Simple thing, it needs more exposure. It needs the media to, to pick up on it. Mm -hmm. Media only cover England games, but you know, you look at the Super League now, although they are deeming it successful, I feel there could be a lot more media coverage. Mm -hmm. Even the local media around where we are, they don't really pick up. You know. It'd be nice to see a few photographers come round or mm -hmm. other journalists, mm -hmm. but until the media actually pick up on what's going on, mm -hmm. it will never ever really catch on. Right. Why did because the thing was I, I remember um, oh God this is a, <laughs> I'm showing my age a bit here but I remember about twenty years ago there was a little bit of exposure then and there was a couple of live games on ITV and this was like the late eighties yeah. like early nineties and people were just like and like and and it was it got I, I remember it being quite well received and here we are twenty years later and you know because I th I thought I thought that the Olympics was you know. 75,000 people were at um, Wembley watching the you know, DB against Brazil. So do you think that will, do you think there's every chance that possibly could encourage youngsters who are watching? You know, do you think these Olympics have done Britain good in that sense? The Olympics done Britain good, that's without a fact. Mm -hmm. But will it do good for football? I think you'll have the normal four or five months. Mm -hmm. People might come out watch games, you, you look at our attendance today, last time we played Yeovil we had probably a handful but we mm -hmm. had quite a few more in today. Mm -hmm. um, but then once the rain comes, that's when people will stop coming. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem that we have, and mm -hmm. I've said this so many times, is that our market is playing exactly the same time that we're playing at 2 o'clock on a Sunday. Right. If we play a midweek game, we easily get 150, 200 people in to mm -hmm. come and watch us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we need we need the media to do more. Mm. It's, we've got a great platform. Mm. We just need someone to help push us. There's only so much as a club we can do to push. Mm. You know, we, we digital media club of the year, which shows the sort of work that we're doing. Mm. But you do need a helping hand. Well, let's see if I can uh, oh, do my little bit. Yeah, <laughs> um, when I met you a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. You told me that your players have to pay themselves to play, mm -hmm. pay themselves to yep. play, and my jaw dropped. It yep. did, considering the charity shield was on in the pub, uh, <laughs> you know, City against Chelsea, yep. and well, apparently I heard there was half a billion pounds worth of talent in that stadium that yep. day in the squad within the like 22 man each squad. Um, is it difficult to get the fundings throughout all the leagues in, in ladies football? There is no funding. Really? There why is, no why is that? Or you, you, you'd think that, you know... You'd, you'd think so, yeah. but, you know, again, we go to the Super League, although they're meant to be semi-pro, but mm -hmm. you actually, when you speak to some of the players and hear the money that they're getting, it's, it doesn't even pay for their you know, petrol money to go training and things mm -hmm. like that. It's, it's heartbreaking that we as a club have to ask players to pay mm -hmm. um, and it's hard then when we have to chase the players you know, mm -hmm. because otherwise we, we struggle then to pay for facilities and things like that. Mm -hmm. I took a bold decision this year to actually slash our annual subs right. to help the players mm -hmm. um, but obviously then you've got to find that money from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. you know, players at this level shouldn't have to pay but it is. As far as sorry, as far as you know, or uh, do you, have you heard anything through the grapevine? Are there any sort of are there any players in the men's game who uh, who take a note of, of women's football or, or, or maybe teeny bit of their wages or anything? Is there any sort of players that you that you are aware of? I, I know a few years ago, um, Reading, mm -hmm. their, their players done uh, some sort of contribution fund mm -hmm. to donate to um, their women's team. Right. But I, I, I'm not really too sure. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've had uh, in our time we've had junior player come down and watch us, mm -hmm. which was really nice. The girls really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, because you'd think, wouldn't you? You know, because like you know, the players. 
some players, they caught the attention, they yeah. love the attention. Uh, you know, I think it would be a very noble and honourable thing that perhaps if a, one of the Premier League players did sort of stick their neck out a little bit and it would bring them a lot of good exposure, I guess. Uh, without, Do you know what I mean there? Yeah, 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 without a doubt. But, <laughs> but are they intellectual to think that like that? Oh, no, no, they are very intellectual. <laughs> but you've also got to look at the, the player schedules as well. You know, yeah, they're either I guess playing so. on a Saturday mm -hmm. or, or, or playing on a Sunday. So for them, it's, it's hard because... You know, not all the players, if we relate to Gillingham, not all of them live around this area. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, from what I understand, Gillingham would get more community orientated. Mm -hmm. And it would, yeah, it would be nice for one or two of them just to, to pop up here and, and support us. Mm -hmm. It would also help, you know, if we knew that there was players coming up here, it would help us um, mm -hmm. to promote it, yeah. to probably get more Jules fans in because we. Um, advertise that dual season ticket holders can come in for free mm -hmm. but in all that time unless it's the Arsenal or Chelsea friendlies mm -hmm. you know we only have a handful of Jules fans coming to watch us. Mm -hmm. okay. Talking of Jules, um, could you tell me a little bit about the, the history Martin like uh, how, how long have you been chairman at the club? I've been running the club this is my fifth season now mm -hmm. um, if we go back to when I started Gillingham Football Club just took Gillingham ladies over, so they actually come under their umbrella mm -hmm. um, because they got their centre of excellence which they needed to develop for the girls to go on. Mm -hmm. So they brought me on initially as manager. Mm -hmm. When was the club founded, if I may ask? It goes way back, I think around about 1990. In the 90s? In the 90s, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And they were still fairly new. You know, still quite a fresh. lot of the women's teams are new. Yeah. Um, although, saying that, we. <laughs> We did have uh, a couple years ago, we had this lady turn up and she played in a Gillingham ladies team mm -hmm. which started back in the 50s. Really? Yeah, they went for about two or three years mm -hmm. and she turned up. So that was really good to see. see it, it. it would have been interesting to see how it was looked upon in those days. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know I absolutely. think it's probably quite acceptable to be honest with you because, you know, like, I think they. They, they kind of like call it like the 60s and the 70s where you're getting the Billy Bremners and the, the lads and there was a lot there was a lot more sort of the hooliganism in, the, yeah. in, the, like in those days wasn't there in the 70s particularly that's when it all sort of started on the terraces but I can imagine in the 50s it was probably quite yeah. you know socially like acceptable and quite like, they kind of like were quite favourable yeah, towards it incredible <laughs> but yeah going back to um, so five years Jim mm -hmm. took them over they brought me on um, and it just went from there. Gillingham were overseeing us, um, but then we decided to, in, within a few months, split, which gave us more flexibility. Mm -hmm. Me as myself was, was manager at the time, but I have to be honest, and, and I knew within the first couple of weeks that mm -hmm. I was well out my depth coaching-wise. Mm -hmm. um, Why so, was that? Well, I, I was typical, you know, I, I didn't really know what level to expect when I come on board. Mm -hmm. Um, but within your first session, you realise, wow, this lot is talented. Mm -hmm. um, so when we sort of not we financially split from Gillingham, um, which gave me more power to run the club. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I decided to do was I had a coach with me, Ian Varley. Um, I made him manager. So then I could then sit back and oversee. Because when you think back... When I started, we were just literally had 14, 15 players. Mm -hmm. We were playing in a park field, and we were only staying up literally by teams folding. And me and Ian sat down, and we both felt if we were putting on all this dedication, we want to get something out of it. And that's how we then evolved and made this new Gillingham a brand sort of thing. We looked at the players that were in Medway. Um, but we're playing for other teams when really they should be playing for us, our local club, and we just started building on from there. Mm -hmm. and brought in the media department, the community department, and slowly we've got there. There's still a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. without a doubt, but it's good that from five people watching, we're now averaging around about 80, 90 people watching. Uh, that actually leads me on to my next question I was going to ask. Could you just tell us about the league setup in ladies football? You know, how many divisions are there? Like, is there is there, there mainly like um, split between northern and southern? Is yeah, right? it's, it's like a pyramid. Mm -hmm. um, my reserve team um, started at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. um, they won that league, so I think there's literally six promotions to where we are now, mm -hmm. 
and then obviously the, you, you, you've got the north and south divide so they're all playing at the same level and then the winners of the northern group and the southern group then go into the, what you call the premiership which is where we are now mm -hmm. but you've still got a southern premiership and a northern premiership mm -hmm. and then the two go up to the national premiership if that makes sense so jills are in the southern premier league We're in now. The southern, yeah and what what's the next step up from this one the next step is the national division right okay and may i ask what what um what what teams at the top of your head are yep. in the top flight at the moment? Uh, top flight is um, our local to us is Cholton. Mm -hmm. You've got Portsmouth that went up the other year. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the northern teams, which is Sunderland, Leeds, Coventry, I think Aston Villa, mm -hmm. so and Cardiff. So there's uh, although we got a lot of travelling to do, they've got even more travelling to do. Mm -hmm. And you pity teams like Portsmouth who have got to travel to Sunderland and Leeds just for a game of football, financing it themselves. So the Women's Super League, <laughs> they consist of the Arsenals and the Chelsea's, yes. is that right? Yeah. Okay. The Super League is a closed league. It's like the Americans where um, you get a licence yeah. and you bid for the licence. It's, it's originally started off as a two-year licence, it's extended to three years licence. Mm -hmm. So you've got to put in a business plan, um, you've got to have your own funding, and you've got to then put it to the FA who then decide which clubs they want to go. But it was very controversial, their first lot of selections. Does more funding go into those clubs, if any funding at all, or is it still quite Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they get some nice funding. They also get help mm -hmm. uh, marketing from, from the FA. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they, they, they have to raise a certain amount of money and the FA match that, you know. I, I've heard some figures, but... I wouldn't like to say, but they do match it. Because I think Sunderland are the high flying birds there in that league, Sunderland aren't they? Are, yeah, yeah no, they're doing that. And I think um, one of the girls who sc the girl who scored at Wembley, I think her name's Stephanie Houghton, yeah, the yeah. Team GB, she scored, and she's at Arsenal, she's at I Arsenal, believe. Yeah. Okay, so you know, would ultimately that be your ambition, your your like, to get up there? You know, without a doubt. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not in this game to just be complacent where we are, you've got to keep pushing, mm -hmm. otherwise there's no point. I, I understand that they're changing the, the um, Premier League, the Super League structure, mm -hmm. they want to make it to two divisions, Right. so it'll be interesting to see where they go. But How yeah. many teams are in the Premier League around? There's eight. There's only eight? Eight. Yeah. Eight, uh, eight, sorry, eight in the Super League, right. in the Premier League you've got ten in the Northern, ten in the Southern. Okay, and how many, on average, how many games are played in a season? Um, so we've got 18, 18 yeah. league games, and okay. then we've got League Cup, FA Cup. So it's just the normal, you play each other twice a season? Yeah. Right, okay, okay. Because no. oh, no, in the Scottish Premier League, they play each other three yeah. or four times. Uh, you get like a range of Celtic, or not ranges anymore, no. for a long time. Um, but you, you get like the, the old firm, yeah. like three or four times a year, wouldn't you? So, yeah, exactly. you know, cause I, I was just thinking to myself, because it's a small league, would you play each other a few, like more than a few no, times? No. Okay. Yeah. You, you have the problem in winter where you get a lot of games cancelled. Mm -hmm. uh, last season we had a really good season where virtually nothing got cancelled. And Colchester had finished all their league games by Christmas. Mm -hmm. Previously, the season before was when it was all snow and we had about two months wiped out mm -hmm. where you just couldn't play. Mm -hmm. So it, it, if you were to have more teams, it gets harder. You then get forced to have midweek games, which sometimes midweek games are good if they're if local, but if you have to have a midweek game, travelling out far, yeah, it's got to work, it's not really. Well, if we can just talk dream world for a moment, yeah. just like, this is my world. That's my well, world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you could give me a realistic goal yep. between now and, say, I don't know, 2014, 2015, what, 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 would you, what would you like to achieve for the club? What would you hope to, like, where, where would you like to be, hopefully? The first thing, I'd like to be financially stable. Mm. That we, we've got, you know, we've got some fantastic sponsors on board. Mm -hmm. If we can just get another couple more sponsors, it means the girls don't have to pay. Mm -hmm. We can find a fantastic training facility. That's the other problem. There is no training facilities. Mm -hmm. And by that time, you'd hope that we would be just being given a license to be in the Super League. Mm -hmm. 
Well, no, I, I really, really do. I hope that works out. And on a personal level, Martin, I want to thank you for letting me... Uh, well, I, I was the kind of like the weirdo with the camera when I first came down a couple of weeks ago. And I just... Because obviously, like, I came out of yeah, nowhere yeah, and I just no, wanted no, to just get stuck yeah. in. And like I said to you, I fell in love with it. When I watched the, the Olympic Games, I fell in love with the game. I love the game. And I, like I said to you, it, it, a couple of weeks ago, it reminded me... There was... It almost seemed like it was just genuine passion. Yeah. And that's what I loved, and it reminded me of the way the guys' game yeah, used to be we, years you ago. You hit the nail on the head because the biggest problem we have is getting people down to mm -hmm. watch us because they don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. But when they come down, mm -hmm. they get hooked. You know, mm -hmm. we, we, we're building up a nice little core of support mm -hmm. who, who just come along. They don't know what to expect, and then all of a sudden you start seeing them week in, week out. Mm -hmm. So my advice to anyone who's not seen a women's game is go along. You. you be surprised. Pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Exactly. And I have to say, you know, we need people like you mm -hmm. to highlight women's football because that's the only way we can do it. We need, you know, the media ain't going to do it. We've got to try and do it ourselves. So independent people like yourselves, mm -hmm. you know, we need you. Well, it'd be nice if, if well, a realistic goal for me over the next year or two is that if I could get a hundred players on my channel, yep. you know, interviews, talking about the game, talking about, and that's also nice for youngsters to see, seeing the way they talk Absolutely. and the way they yeah. they express themselves, and that's the whole idea of it. And uh, you're right, because yeah. young girls they need role models. You know, we, we've, mm. we've got some girls teams coming up to watch us, but you know, they, they can have the role models of John Terry, Rio Ferdinand, but. They need female role models, and mm -hmm. you know I know I've been speaking to a parent tonight, and her, fav her daughter's favourite player is Nat mm -hmm. you know, and It's great that these youngsters know these players' names and they're looking up to them. That's wonderful. Okay, well listen, well thanks ever so much for your time. I, I really do hope it goes well for the rest of this season and beyond, and uh, and thanks ever so no, much for the interview. Thank you. Cheers.